A very good evening to one and all present here today. On behalf of NMIMS University Student Council, I, Vaishnavi Gadi, HOD Public Relations, would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed speaker for today, Ms. Priyanka Acharya, founder of Lakshmi Gyan. Before we get to our discussion, I would like to graciously introduce our speaker. Ms. Priyanka Acharya is a financial educator, a published author, and a podcaster. As the founder of Lakshmi Gyan, she is on a mission to make finance a way of life. Her past 15 years of diverse finance experience includes 40,000 plus individuals addressed and 17 management research papers published. She has won various accolades, one of them being the Inspiring Gem of India Award 2022. In George Clayson's words, wealth like a tree grows from a seed. The sooner you plant that seed, the sooner shall the tree grow. With this quote, we, being future industry leaders and entrepreneurs, are looking forward to building our knowledge and increasing our awareness on the topic of personal finance at early stages of your career. I am certain that today's session will act as a stepping stone to prepare students for an intelligent and smooth transition from money to their first salary. Ma'am, would you like to say a few words before we begin? Sure. So first of all, uh, nobody has taught us personal finance, whether we were in school or college. I am so delighted that NMIMS Student Council is taking up uh, this as a topic for this kind of a discussion, which by which you know we can reach so many students and so many young aspirants who are going to enter the world of you know work and corporate stuff. So thank you so much for all the effort that has gone into bringing this up. And uh, I think uh, we can't educate everybody in these few minutes, but for sure we can trigger the thought today. And like you said, the seed towards, you know, understanding wealth, at least that we can definitely plan for today. Yes, ma'am, indeed. Thank you so much. We're thankful for you for taking time out from your busy schedule to share your thoughts and experiences with us, ma'am. So let's get to our much awaited discussion on personal finances at early stages of your career. So ma'am, I have collected questions from various students over the past one week, and we're looking forward to hearing your insights on the same. Without any further delay, let us start with the enlightening session and embrace ourselves with the correct knowledge of personal finances. With your kind permission, I'd like to begin with our first question, ma'am. Sure, I'm all game for it. All right. So ma'am, our first question is, uh, what would be the best practices before we start earning? Um, so we have all been a pocket money generation and a piggy bank generation. So all of us have seen money very, very early on in our lives. It's not that, you know, we need to wait for an opportunity to earn money. Uh, but what happens is, uh, let me give you a small example. For example, uh, if we get 24 by 7 water supply in our houses, so, you know, we are so used to it. We may not really, you know, bother about wasting water or anything unless a school gives us a project to, you know, save water somewhere. Uh, similarly, with pocket money, with piggy banks, we know that the source of money is fixed. It's our parents or guardians or somebody who takes care of us. And as soon as we ask for it, perhaps we may have to put a little bit of effort for extra money, but uh, there's there's no resource crunch that comes. So before earning, if we have not seen any resource crunch, we have got used to that thought process that, you know, as soon as we need money, it's always there. So before we start earning, the concept of saving, the concept of realizing that whenever there's a crunch, I'll wait for two, three days. Maybe, you know, I'll go without a pizza or I'll go without a Coke. I'll try to, you know, manage in those two days and see how it feels. So it's not getting poor, but it's getting smarter with your money. So we we don't want that, you know, your money goes uh, all into zeros and minuses. But at the same time, if we know the feel of, you know, being without money, perhaps we will value the days when we will have a lot of money with us. That's true, ma'am. That's absolutely true. I think from your answer, we'll understand that the concept of saving is what we must first adopt. Very well illustrated. Our second question is, uh, what should be our decisions and processes in the first six months of getting our salary be back? Okay. So, uh, firstly, I know this is a serious discussion, but uh, let me bring some element of surprise here. Uh, while you look at the first six months of salary, uh, even my father used to say this, I have myself done this, and you would love to do this. 
the first salary has to be splurged so don't even think about saving investing in all these big stuffs uh, the first salary has to be celebrated because it's the milestone in your career which is not going to come back so enjoy that salary make a wish list bucket list whatever you want and just enjoy that salary but from the second salary onwards you need to start being responsible and you need to understand that uh, in those initial uh, five Five six months that you earn money, uh, those are the lifestyle setting months of your career. So uh, earlier, you know, when we are with parents, as I said, uh, money flows as we want, but at the same time, there are a lot of restrictions. So we also don't feel like you know asking for um, you know too much of money from our parents because we also have that independent thought process. But we always feel that you know as soon as I start earning, I'm going to spend on so. so spend on buying something like this so all that is already on our mind so the wish list is going to be very very huge in the initial 5 months you need to understand that uh, warren buffett has given a theoretical concept saying uh, you first save and spend what is left unfortunately we always go the otherwise so we have such a big wish list that we would generally spend first and then wait that you know we have so many years of work so many years of our career we'll start saving later on so that's why when you have before earning you have a saving habit it always helps but even if you don't have it so far you can at least start start by now when you start you know uh, we generally feel that you need to save thousands of rupees from the lakhs of money that you get mm-hmm. i think uh, every journey towards lot of miles begins with a small step so you might start with a gradual 10 rupees saving every day you might start with 100 saving every day it sounds very boring and dry but that sets you on the habit pattern so when you go to the gym you you don't just you know start working out on the first day you will have a warm up so the first 5 months of your career are the warm up towards saving investing and insuring mm-hmm. uh one more thing i need to highlight here is that never get biased in these first 5 months so what happens is you are on a very initial stage of your career so you would generally depend on parents you would generally depends on friends on you know your siblings uncles aunties and you would ask them how do i really manage the money mm-hmm. now everybody gives you their own view of money so when you are building your own room let us say okay you want your choice of colors your choice of furniture even if somebody says your parents say that our room was like so and so you will mm-hmm. not accept it you will say that nahi humko to aisa nahi aisa chahiye so just like your preferences for your architecture and interior design you need to make your own financial architecture and financial designs mm. so for that you need to take inputs and insights from everybody around you mm. utilize those insights don't just implement them then you research about it so these initial 5 months are like where you begin with small investments small insurances you just start to take an experience and feel of it mm. and you research so how do you research um you go to the regulatory websites so there is rbi there is sebi there is irda there is pfrda so you go to these websites you find them very overwhelming because they have so many circulars yeah. but these people have a lot of consumer education material which is very very simple so like rbi has its own financial literacy comics so even my own 10 year old son loves to read them and we all would love to read our tinkles and stuffs right so you can go and read them Mm-hmm. uh in fact on the same lines uh i have scripted a web series currently which is just released last week mm-hmm. uh it's called unition u n i t i o n academy and it's on their website called unitionacademy.com you go to that it's a free access uh, series so it's our first season which has got released which explains what is money mm-hmm. so uh, these are some of the interesting sources where you can get a lot of details Sebi has now launched lot of handbooks small handbooks which teach you about shares and mutual funds also so mm-hmm. it has separate books you know workbook for uh, retirees workbook for students for working executives mm-hmm. so research on all this use the insights of experience that you have got from other people and then you blend your own decisions don't just jump into you know investing insuring take small steps start and just continue with consistency okay That was indeed interesting to know, ma'am. I think we as students have never really thought of researching in so much depth, and go. We always try to 
listen to what our parents recommend and it's these habits which we develop early on that will make the real difference thank you ma'am our third question is as a student what should be our ideal investment portfolio so when you are students um let me put it this way that uh, if i serve you the same vegetable every day vaishnavi would you like to consume it every day absolutely not <laughs> so same as when you start investing sometimes you feel that i have done one thing and i am done with it so just like you uh, you know you wish to explore a lot of new cuisines you wish to explore a lot of new places you want to explore so many new things so same ways explore finance don't uh, take it as a burden take it as a procedure you explore how it works so there are three baskets you need to make one is saving two is insuring and third is investing okay. so when you are saving you are ideally you know having cash with you or you are having a bank account where you are putting and parking some of your money um you have your recurring deposits you have fixed deposits all these kind of traditional options uh never get bias saying that okay this is not modern so i will not put my money here you need to build and like you said you know in your question itself what is the portfolio yeah. so portfolio is not only shares ka portfolio it has to be an entire portfolio of your finance okay. so never get bias saying that okay these are boring options these are low return options because you need everything you need a salad you need a main course you need a dessert in your food so okay. same ways you bifurcate everything uh put some money in your recurring deposit so that that acts as a cushion whenever you know you have a financial crunch towards paying your insurance premiums and stuffs so this recurring deposit will help you you have to plan it in such a way that if you are buying an insurance policy two days prior you start a recurring deposit so that at any point of time you have a sabbatical you want to launch your own startup you have a gestation that money will be of use to you so build up some kind of you know calculated risk securities for your own consistency towards your money first mm -hmm. when you are insuring again don't get biased thinking that you know okay it's a product which doesn't give me anything you think what is insurance understand research from irda how you know vehicle insurance works how health insurance works how life insurance works mm -hmm. uh, buy policies not which your parents have bought by policies which are going to be useful to you after 20 25 years because that's what insurance is for mm -hmm. uh if you are investing start small and start gauging what is happening mm -hmm. so we would love to you know we are fascinated with opening demat accounts and stuff which is very nice to do so buy one share and track it but mm -hmm. don't expect it to grow every day because it's it's a share ultimately okay it will have its own correction patterns so don't think that okay i put 100 rupees it has become 95 it's not working for me it's not luck don't get into intraday speculation and stuffs these are all things which professionals do you do your investment job first Mm -hmm. so then once you have bought one share a month then go to two shares in a month then go to three shares in a month by then in 3 4 months you would have figured out how it works and when you track your fundamentals are very clear so fashion may keep changing but the fun fundamentals of asset allocation will, will always remain the same across every generation mm -hmm. so you figure out in those five months of your salary you are putting stuff as a saving you are investing something you are insuring something and that will take you on your own path absolutely okay ma'am that's such a unique way of helping us understand investment i think <laughs> the advice i'm going to swear by thank you sure So our fourth question is um how can we align personal finances with appraisals okay so uh, all of us want you know incomes to increase all of us want to earn more we want to do something more we want to achieve uh, you know we want to make our parents proud because we have had so much of good quality education in our lives and we are blessed with that mm -hmm. so while we are doing this um there's an income which is going to increase but however much the income increases we are going to always face a crunch if we are not managing our money yeah. because um in our school days we used to wear those white canvas shoes and we were very happy with you know wearing those yeah. today when i go for a dream run marathon also i want to wear branded sport shoes mm -hmm. so my choices have increased mm -hmm. and that way my inflation of the economy is increasing but at the same time my inflation of lifestyle is increasing 
and that is going to keep on increasing i mean we are all putting so much of efforts professionally only to have a good personal life so mm-hmm. there is no harm in having aspirations there's no harm in having these kind of wish lists mm-hmm. but these wish lists will always keep on increasing they will never depreciate So you need to understand that your lifestyle has to keep on improving. For that, you will need an active income. You will have to set a passive income for your, you know, early thirties, late thirties, forties, and stuffs. So mm-hmm. when you have to set a passive income, the best way to start is in the initial six months of your salary itself. Mm-hmm. So what you have to do is you need to build a passive income by way of tagging your investments. so i'm sure students are very you know fascinated by tagging friends on instagram and facebook and stuff now if i have done an event in nmims or if i am doing this conversation with you i will tag vaishnavi or i will tag nmims i won't tag some other university i won't tag some other student because that becomes irrelevant mm-hmm. same ways when i am investing my money i need to tag it so in my investment diary or an excel sheet that i maintain i just don't need to put numbers i have to tag it saying that this sip this share or this kind of portfolio or this kind of insurance whatever i have done i have taken it for a certain purpose Mm-hmm. so let's say i bought you know 10 shares of some company and i've bought it because i am already saving for the new house that i will buy after 10 years yeah. so i have tagged it to a financial you know aspiration that i have mm-hmm. if i am doing something short term i have tagged it saying that after a year i want to buy a nice microwave oven and a nice refrigerator for my house mm-hmm. so i am buying a liquid fund today and i will put sips here instead of paying emis i better put those sips delayed by one year and then i'll buy it from the returns that i'll get mm-hmm. so what i've done is i've tagged same ways when your income improves your lifestyle is going to naturally improve your saving insurance investment also has to improve because your passive income has to improve mm-hmm. so you need to understand this balance it out and think as soon as you get your appraisal see what is the amount in hand which has increased you bifurcate it into four parts one is your lifestyle let it have the major chunk no problem mm-hmm. one is your saving one is your insurance one is your investment mm-hmm. once you have bifurcated it then plot it accordingly and then you will know that everything you know you have got the best of all the worlds correct okay. that was indeed an eye opener ma'am the concepts of lifestyle inflation and investment tagging are something new that i learned today so our fifth and final question would be uh what financial mistakes should one refrain from <laughs> this is uh, you know usually we always talk about what is to be done yeah uh, i think very interesting question has come from a student perhaps because these pitfalls are what we don't identify so one i have already answered in the earlier question where i said that uh, when your parents or your neighbors or your friends have done something that mm. that is their financial architecture do not copy anybody's architecture is the first you know mistake that you uh, as in copying financial architecture is the first mistake that you have to avoid because as soon as we get influenced by advertisements or what by what people have done we are somewhere taking it to the drains because um, our parents lived in a different generation our elder siblings lived in a different generation so today i don't even follow the fashion that my mother was following so i as i said fundamental insights i need to take from them because they have all the experience you identify their mistakes and you don't repeat them second mistake is never deal with finances because you know we feel that it's okay i mean we have priorities so as students you will say you have assignments when you start working you will say you have projects you have deadlines you have so many things to meet you have your family to cater to you have your weekends to cater to and so many things have to be done mm-hmm. in all of this you are bound to delay your financial decisions because you feel that okay fine i can do it next week i can do it next month i can perhaps do it next financial year Mm-hmm. but in that you know hassle uh, we all know the stephen covey's matrix of urgent versus important what happens is the important suddenly becomes urgent either for saving taxes or because you are going to an age group where you know you feel that you are already too late or you are getting influenced by thinking that somebody has already made so much of money and i have not even started so let that important not become urgent you treat it as important take smaller steps uh the third mistake that we make is that um, we always go by asking about returns and risk only mm-hmm. 
never ask only these questions you need to know how much return you will get obviously you need to know the level of risk that is involved in the instrument that you are investing or insuring but at the same time there are so many questions that you need to ask a person okay for example um there are so many nuances in finance so it's like a lifelong learning subject so what i have done is um, on spotify on youtube on uh, instagram i uh, post less than one and a half minutes of audio content every day which mm-hmm. is called as the lakshmi gyan library mm-hmm. so when you listen to it what happens is your locker keys your bank accounts so many small small little things are what you know we keep on procrastinating thinking that you know time nahi hai effort hai usme karna padega you start taking one by one step and start you know teaming up with your family so mm-hmm. don't make the mistake uh, of doing it alone also mm-hmm. you become a family become a team and then do it together have a conversation and decide that this month what is my action plan rather than waiting for 5 years of goals mm-hmm. so you pick up an action plan do it for that month and mm-hmm. then you go by the last mistake is where uh, all of us have this problem that we invest or insure or save and we keep it somewhere so um our addresses change we will inform everybody on our whatsapp and facebook and stuffs but we'll uh, forget to inform our insurance companies our mutual fund companies and our dmat uh, you know securities companies you get that address changed first get your phone numbers correctly uh, you know map you get your email ids correctly done because all this conversation is very much crucial in your finances the biggest mistake people make is that their datas are not updated mm-hmm. so you get that updated get all these small things sorted you will yourself see that you know your financial hygiene is very proper you know proper mm-hmm. and when you want to cook the food you always want the kitchen to be clean right so you need a clean classroom you need a clean kitchen everything you need clean and hygienic to start a process mm-hmm. so your income will automatically rise you know if i go by the sacred rule of calling it lakshmi instead of uh, wealth or finance or money uh, lakshmi is something sacred okay we'll we'll have this lakshmi puja on every diwali so we'll clean up the whole house we'll do so much of uh, you know all these sacred kind of things but every penny that comes to your house everything that you saved everything that you earn is all a part of the sacred lakshmi so uh, you need to be very you know inclusive about it you need to be very passionate about it and compassionate about it and that will sort a lot of mistakes that people make and um, i think i need to really say that through this conversation you know we have put across some tidbits of information to people i want these people to take it ahead talk to you know fight and people more about it it becomes a nice teach back also it becomes a reminder to yourself also and definitely you will not make those mistakes once you tell people about them absolutely thank you ma'am i think now our audience exactly knows what to be aware of when we are taking financial decisions and never to delay <laughs> these decisions So thank you ma'am for answering all our questions so patiently. Thank you so much for your valuable and enriching words of wisdom ma'am. I'm sure that the audience right. is taking back home a major chunk of knowledge on the importance of financial planning and setting and achieving realistic financial goals early in their career. I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you Ms Priyanka Acharya for addressing us today. We're all very going to we're going to be very inspired by your words. Thank you ma'am. It's always a pleasure to be a part of NMIMS, and thank you for your effort in getting these questions in place. And thank you for this conversation, Vaishnavi. Thank you, ma'am.